Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush with another algebra video for you. So, today we're talking about systems and nonlinear equations in two variables. Because we have two variables, we're in two space, and here's our to-do list. We'll do a quick overview of linear systems in two and three variables to kind of prep you for these nonlinear ones, because they're a little, little crazy, but not bad. And then we'll do a quick example. This example will be a nonlinear system of two variables, and it will have a circle and a parabola. And we'll see where, if anywhere, they touch. Let's start. So what exactly is a system of nonlinear equations and two variables? Well, two variables, that just means we have an x and a y. Or they could potentially have some other two variables, but most often they just have x and y's at this point. So that's not terrible. How about the nonlinear equation part? Nonlinear, that's a little tricky. Before you dealt with nonlinear systems, you probably dealt with linear systems, which just had lines if you were in only had two variables in two dimensions, or they were planes. So think flat sheets of paper that are infinitely large if you have three variables. So if they're nonlinear now, the linear part is what restricted us to the straight, either plane or a straight line. But now that they're nonlinear, we can have some curve. So we're not restricted to lines anymore or planes, and we can have parabolas, we can have an ellipse, we can have circles, we can have lots of stuff. So that's what the nonlinear part means. And a system, what does a system mean? System just means we have more than one equation that we're dealing with. Uh, these equations are in two variables, meaning we have just two variables. In them, so we'll have two equations, two variables. Not bad. I would say that that's only complicated on the weekends. Or maybe not. Okay, not at all. Let's talk about two linear equations and two variables. So we have two equations. Both of those equations represent lines. You can see our solution options. We have one solution if those lines touch in one spot. We have no solution if the lines are parallel and never touch. Or we have infinite solutions if those lines are the same line and every point on them is a point on the other one as well. So this example system I gave you is in the option one category and it touches in one spot, x equals negative two and y equals five. That's two linear equations and two variables. So three linear equations. So if we gain an equation here, so we have three instead of two and we gain a variable, we've got now got z's in there instead of x's and y's, we still have those same three options. One solution where instead of lines, now because we have three variables, we're dealing with planes. So again, think sheets of paper in three-dimensional space. And here you see just actual things that look like sheets of paper, but it's just because I can't draw something that's infinite. So imagine that these planes, like this red plane here, goes up forever in this direction that direction, this direction, and that direction. So these planes are infinite, but they're still just flat sheets of paper. There's really big sheets of paper. So the one solution option means you just have one point, again, where they all three cross. And the solution's an x, y, z coordinate, or an ordered triplet. So that's what our example system was. It had one solution. And that solution was x equals negative 1, y equals 2, and z equals negative 2. You could also have the no solution category. So notice in the first picture, these three planes are all perpendicular, not touching. I mean parallel, not touching. Or you could have two of them touching at a time. The red and the green touch, but not the purple. Or you have the purple and the green touch but not the red so they don't all touch at the same time or we could have infinite number of solutions so 
in this picture here we have three planes green red and purple and they all touch in at us something that creates a line so that their their point of touching for all of them creates this vertical line that's yellow and there are an infinite number of points on there so each of those infinite number of x y z coordinates that delineate a point is a solution so we have the same options one solution no solution or infinite solutions so now we're fast forwarding to nonlinear. So because they're nonlinear, check that out. We've got some squares in there where we didn't have that before. So now we can have squares, we can have cubes, we can have lots of different stuff. So the, t the equation number one is a parabola. You can see it here on the left, the red parabola. Equation number two is a circle with center zero zero and a radius of three and we're curious where these two objects touch if anywhere we can see from our picture that they cross at one point they touch at one point that point zero three so that's what we will be looking for as uh, we go through our solution process our algebra it's a good idea with all of these types of nonlinear systems and equations to to have a visual of what's going on because it doesn't really always fit the categories that we saw in linear systems. For example, we could have one solution here, but we could also have, say, say the parabola came like this, then we would have two solutions. Or what if the parabola was like that? Check that out. Now we all of a sudden have four solutions. So because of the nonlinearity that's happening, we can have more than one solution, but not have infinite solutions. So it's kind of hard to know how many you have unless you're super secure with your algebra skills or you have a visual to help you to know that you have not excluded something by making a mistake algebraically all right whoa that was fast let's solve this nonlinear system and when we're looking to solve these we again have the options of substitution or addition as far as our methods and those are the same methods we used back in linear systems of two or three variables the only sticky point with nonlinear systems is when you use the addition method you've got to be careful because if you remember back to adding and subtracting polynomials you can't add or subtract polynomials that aren't like terms so or you can't add two terms that aren't like terms and like is a mathematical term which means the variables are the same and the exponents on the variables are the same. So here in equation one, we have a y. In equation two, we have a y squared. So we couldn't add those together. We could, though, get rid of the x squareds because we have an x squared in both of those, both equations, equation one and equation two. I tend to look for the path of least resistance. And for me, since equation one is already solved for y, you can see here then why don't we just plug that into equation two right here and then we'll just have x's we can solve for x and then back substitute in to find our y so that's what we're going to do if we have our equation two and again we're going to substitute in for y so y is no longer just going to be y y is going to be from equation one we have y equals x squared plus three so the x part squared plus three whoops is going to come right here that's a squared if you can't tell let me write it again 
So now we're just maybe questioning this term. What is that? What is quantity x squared plus 3 squared? x squared plus 3 squared. That's the same thing as x squared plus 3 times x squared plus 3. And lucky for you, I wrote out a little note that tells you what that is. So we can move through it a little bit faster. So here we're really just foiling, right? So first gives us x to the fourth. The outer gives us a 3x squared. The inner gives us another 3x squared. And the last gives us the 9. And if we decided to combine these two, which we should, then 3x squared plus 3x squared gives us 6x squared. So we really have x to the fourth here plus 6x squared plus 9. That is what x squared plus 3 times x squared plus 3 is. We just replaced it there. So now let's do some more algebra. We've got a 9 on both sides. Let's get rid of that. That's beautiful because 9's cancel. And let's see. It looks like we have an x to the 4th first, and then we have a 7x squared because we had 6x squared and then another one out front. So, and then we have an equal 0. Can't forget that. Now we notice that this has an x squared and this has an x squared in it. So we can factor out an x squared. And if we do that, what do we have? If we pull out an x squared, what do we have left? In our first term, if we pulled out an x squared, then we have an x squared left. In our second term, if we pulled out the x squared, it's gone, and we just have the 7 left. And we have our equal 0. So this is great because now we have something call it a multiplied by something else. We'll call it b, and that equals 0, right? So we can use our zero factor property, which means if you have two things that are multiplied together and the result is 0, one or both of those things, a or b or both, equals 0. So we set both of them equal to 0, and we solve. So let's do our first one. Let's solve a equals 0. So x squared equals 0. We can take the square root of both sides. So we have the square root equals plus or minus square root. And we have x squared here and 0 here. The square root and the square cancel. And we're left with x equals plus or minus the square root of 0 is 0. So we get x equals plus or minus 0, which is just x equals 0. Don't forget, though, here, this plus or minus is important. Whenever you take the square root of a variable with an even power, you need to have the plus or minus on the right-hand side. Technically, you can go on either side, but I put it on the right-hand side. So now let's do the b. So we've done the a, so now let's do the b. Solve the b equal to 0. And we get x squared plus 7 equals 0. If we take the 7 to the other side, that gives us x squared equals negative 7. Here you should be thinking, what? How does it even work? 
Can you square anything and have it be negative? Mm, nope, you can't. So here, when we take the square root of both sides, we'll end up seeing what's going on. And you should see it now. So the square and the square root cancel, and we get x equals plus or minus i times square root of 7. So we've got a, an imaginary number. That doesn't work for us. We can't use imaginary numbers here because we're only plot. We're only looking for real solutions. So it leaves us with just 1. So now we're going to solve for y using equation 1, which we have here. And we're just going to plug in x. We only have one option here, so let's plug in x equals 0. So instead of having a an x here, we're going to have 0. And this is going to work out really easily, really great. 0 squared gives us 0. And uh, we have y equals 3. So we have an x and a y coordinate. And what does this tell us? Well, we shouldn't be super surprised, right? Because we knew that 0, 3 was going to be our solution. So we have just shown mathematically, algebraically, that the solution to our system, our nonlinear system, is 0, 3, just a single point where they touch. And this is the point where the parabola and the circle meet. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching.